This is going to be a great sister to sister. Today, Amy, we ask, how do we know the Bible is reliable? Oh, that's good. And also, what about prayers that are unanswered and do you feel shy or scared to pray out loud? No, I don't. Let's pray for you. Welcome to Sister to Sister. So glad that you've chosen to join us today. We are five women of God, opinionated as heck, which you will find out right now. Now you send us questions and we answer pretty much from the word of God and from our hearts. So see what you think about this. This is a good one. You wrote, how do we know that the Bible is reliable? I'm going to my most reliable. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, you know what, I don't like that word reliable. All right. Mm. The Bible is not a magic wand to get what we want. But 2 Timothy 3 says all, all, all scripture is inspired by God, is useful for teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness to equip God's people for every good work. God's word is a training ground for us to live this life like we are in the kingdom of God and we are children of God. So what are principles are reliable? Faith, right. kindness, goodness, mercy, patience, self-control. These are the things that the Holy Spirit brings to us through the written word. And who is this word that fulfills it in our life? Jesus himself. Uh, it says in the Bible that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It's Jesus. Well, that's a good one. Good answer. What do you have? Somebody. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think about it, it's one God revealed in three persons. It's 66 books that make up one book. It's three languages, Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic. It's a hundred, it's 1,189 chapters, 1,500 years, 40 writers, one divine author, two Testaments, New Testament and Old Testament, and it's all congruent. It's all Amen. inerrant. It is all life. It's, it's holy. It is a holy book. If you read it, you will go from darkness to light. If you open up the word, it changes you from the inside out. And no other book in the history of the world has ever taken people and transformed them and became alive in them like the Bible. There are no arguments against it. Wow, that that's could really hold good up. too. What do you have, Angela? You know, one of the things when I hear the word reliable, I love the stance that you took, Roxy. I think of outsiders looking in and understanding and unpacking, like how do I know that this is a trustworthy account? How do I know that this is actually historical? And I love that there are brilliant minds, much more brilliant than I, who have researched this mm -hmm. over decades and decades. And what they have found is they said, according to biblical scholars, Norman Geisler and William Nix, the New Testament has a 99. 0.5% purity rate in terms of accuracy. Mm -hmm. And that's when compared to other works of antiquity. Yep. So wow. overall, the reliability, the historical accounts, those who walk during the days, the prophetic words prophetic, and the fulfillment yes, of them right. is accurate and reliable. You know what, right? I, I couldn't say any of that, what they just said <laughs> <laughs> at all. But you know what, I, I neglected, I'm so sorry to introduce Angela Madden, who's sitting in for Flo today. So after that amazing answer, I felt they have to at least know who you are. Love you. I love you. All right, good. All right, I'm gonna go to the next question. It's a good one too, you wrote it in. And I'm gonna see what Miss Corey has to say. Corey. Oh, someone wrote this. This is so good. What do I say to someone who says the Bible and God are not inclusive? Ooh, that's a big word. I mean, Jesus was one of the most controversial and inclusive figures of his it's time. Right. I mean, he so spent his time with 
those people that were considered the outcasts yes. of society mm -hmm. in that time. He spent his time with the hated uh, tax collectors. He spent his time with women. When women were considered property, women weren't given a place in society at that time. Women were looked at as a, a second tier member of society and they were given a place in his special friend group, in his traveling group. He spent time talking to prostitutes when they were about to stone them. Mm -hmm. He spent time talking to them. He spent time uh, touching the untouchable lepers. I mean, he included those who were not included in the outskirts. So when you look at the figure of Jesus, he included those who weren't included. That's what Jesus was all about. So when people say Christianity is not inclusive, it's like, where are you looking? Look at the stories of Jesus. It's all about inclusivity. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, all about today's inclusivity. World, today world, today's world is different. Roxy, what do you have? Well, you know, I got to say, what's the scripture say? God so loved the world. He loves everyone. It's Christians that point their fingers forgetting three fingers are pointing back. Forgetting, what's Paul say? Once were you. He said, he's saying don't condemn them. Understand, bring them into the fold. What happened to the thief on the cross? He said, you know, God, remember, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. God included him. He didn't have to recite scripture. He didn't have to understand everything. He just acknowledged that the Lord was the king of kings. You don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to think, oh, I'm unrighteous. You have to understand who Jesus is then you can see yourself. He is totally inclusive. He loved the world. He died for the world. He didn't exclude anybody when he said he loves the world. Wow, that's good. I think that Girls. one of the big things is that I love about that is he is all inclusive and it is scandalous. The way that he approaches the world and people around him, it was scandalous. That's why he was so controversial and they didn't love him because he didn't leave anyone out. But I do believe that he puts a demand on our lives and says, I want an exclusive response. You know, it's one of those things where it's when I meet face to face with Jesus that then it's demanding me to say, you are different from everybody else. That's right. And I'll follow you. And so I think that's where maybe sometimes people get that confused thinking, oh, well, it's exclusive. Jesus was exclusive. No, he was inclusive. But even with the young rich ruler, right. he went away. Right. Amy, what this do you have? This word inclusive, I think what they're saying is we want you to affirm us. Say, yeah. and, and basically there is sin there is eternal death and eternal life. And, and talk about inclusive, Jesus says, I wish none, yes. none would perish. Right. That's, that's very inclusive. Right. And that all, very inclusive, I mean, you can't get much broader on inclusive words, all, none, world, okay? That's everybody. <laughs> so like, <laughs> so what I'm shines. saying is, so if I'm in sin and you're not inclusive, you're not, you're not affirming or buying into that, well, no, we want you all, we want you to receive salvation, not, not perfection. We're all in a process um, so good. of sanctification, but, but there is sin and it separates you from God. So it's best to get right with God so that you can have eternal life with and him. And it goes back to that first question too about the Bible being reliable. Just open it, open the word and God will speak to you on both of these questions, one and two, but here comes three. And it's good. Oh, good. Oh, this is so good, too. Oh, my gosh. Someone wrote to us, how often should you pray and listen to God in prayer? And how do you listen to him? This is really good, Angela. It is a good question. Yeah. You know, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, mm -hmm. pray without ceasing. You know, I, I've made it a habit in my life, no matter where I am or what I'm doing, there's a continual conversation going on with the Lord. And so how do we listen to the voice of the Lord? We meditate upon his scripture. Mm -hmm. If there's one scripture that you have and you haven't, you haven't memorized maybe, you continue to go back there and sit in it. Psalms 4610 says, be still and know that I am God. When you are still in his presence, when you are aware of who he is, he will speak and the knowledge of who he is will bubble up in you. Did you memorize scripture as a kid? 
A little bit, but not a ton. Well, yeah, that came later. Well, Corey does. <laughs> yes. I mean, hello, the scripture is just coming out. I had someone say to me one time, how do those sisters do that? <laughs> just come out, Corey. Um, I just thought immediately of the story of Elijah when he went to hear from God and mm. he went and God wasn't in the earthquake and he wasn't in the wind right. and he wasn't right. in the fire, but he was in the still small voice. And you know, sometimes we're like, God, speak to me. And we want to, we want this big sign or we want this, you know, we just want God to like, you know, just, you know, throw it down and just, we want this big thing. And we're not quieting ourselves. We're not making room in our lives. We're not making time to hear God. We're not making that space and that time. So yes, we're to pray without ceasing, but I think it's so important for us to set aside a time every day specifically to pray and to make time to hear that still small voice. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Roxy, I bet you have a scripture also. Well, I do, and I wanna focus on this part that says, how do you listen yes. to God in prayer? Okay, Psalm 55 says, morning, noon, evening, I will pray to you and you will hear my cries. So, okay, we're talking, 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 but as Corey said, we sometimes aren't listening because we don't want to hear <laughs> what right. he says. Right. One time I'm like, okay, God, I'm trying to listen. I open, now this might sound weird, but it did happen. I said, give me direction, please, please, ready to go to sleep, I feel... Uh, encouraged to open my Bible, the, there was a word there, go this way. I'm like, oh my goodness. Now, you know, you can't always interpret and you have to watch. The word actually said, the yeah, I opened go the this Bible way. one night and it was like, go this way. I'm like, all right, Lord, I don't want to go That's that good. way, but you're telling me to go that way. So often through his word, if we keep digging, research, you know, looking, he tells us what he wants us to do. So often I hear him through his word. That's good, Amy. We have an all access pass to the throne we do. because of Jesus. So this means whatever, whenever, however, at all times, in everything, just approach the throne of grace boldly. You have, you have a fast pass. If it were like Disneyland, you'd be at the front of the line. Yes. You're the VIP yes. in the kingdom of God and you go to him right away. You go boldly and confidently and there's no request too small, no request too big, Amen. nothing's off the table. Let it all out to him. You know what I love about the fast pass for Disney, you have to pay for. Our fast pass to the throne room, Amen. it's free. free. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back. You've joined sister to sister in our lively conversation as always. And this question is good too. You sent it in, Roxy's gonna take it. And here it is. Oh, I'm sorry that you had to write this question, but I need yeah. to answer. Yeah. Why, why are so many of our prayers unanswered? Okay, I'm gonna dig right into, and I guess maybe my sisters could answer if there's sin in your heart, you haven't reconciled, etc. I'm gonna go right to what do I do when I don't feel God is answering. You know, in Luke 18, Jesus' words, he gives that parable of the woman who's uh, trying to beat on the door of the unrighteous judge and talks about God being righteous and fair. He says, continue to pray and keep on praying right. and don't lose heart. So what happened to Jesus? He's on the cross, some of his last words. What did he say? My God, my God, why right. have you forsaken me? I'll let theologians answer whether or not God really did forsake him, all right? But he said it. And then what did he say? Into thy hands, O God, I commit my spirit. We pray, we keep on praying, we don't get discouraged. Amy had a scripture, I liked it so much, and one of our last uh, sessions, Romans 12, 12, mm -hmm. that 
joyful in hope, yes. patient yes. in affliction, right. and what? Faithful in prayer. When Jesus says, will I, when I return, will I find any faithful? Right. It's not like, oh yes, healer, bless you, Lord, you're... It is, will I be praying in prayer, still trusting you in my affliction, despite my circumstances? Stay faithful in prayer. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this time to say one thing I don't always answer, but this is on my heart. Unanswered prayer. I have a grandson who is a quarterback and the, his team, ugh. so my daughter and I are just praying, just, just throw something, just get a first down, something, anything. Like we're really, like, I, I know you're not supposed to pray for that, but you are, God says you are. So we're praying and praying and praying and praying. Okay, well, someone sent me something out of the blue and it said this, when you're praying and God answers, you say, God, you're able. When you're praying and he doesn't answer, God says, you are able. Mm. Max is able. I'm happy to report that last game, he threw a touchdown pass. So, but it took about 10 games, but that's okay. So I, just took, I wanted to put the prayer thing in a context that you could understand because it's our hearts to pray. I think we have to remember too that God is not bound by time. We right. are humans yes. and we are bound by time. And so it's very hard for our human minds to grasp that concept, but we're like, we want this, we want it now, we need it right. by blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I did need God it. God yeah. is not bound by time. And so we have to remember that. And sometimes the answer is no, and we're just not willing to accept that. But right. sometimes God, I mean, he sees the whole picture. Yes. He's, he saw the past, he sees the future, and he knows the whole picture. And he's like, my child, I have it under control. Just like when our producer is like, guys, I got it. You know, and we're yeah. like, but, but, but. <laughs> he sees the whole picture. And so we have to just trust in that. He's a good God. He loves us. He's got it. Do you remember that country song, some of God's greatest gifts no, are I hate country unanswered music. prayers? Yes. I look back and some of the greatest gifts in my life were unanswered Very prayers. True. We were That's praying good. for that building, Very believing true. for that building. It was not near as good yeah. as what God had in mind. Right. Yeah. So just be careful. You know, if you ask and you believe that you receive when you pray, you'll have it. You've just got to believe and trust God. Amy, while I have you, I'm going to ask yeah. you this next question so we can get to it because it's really good. And it goes like this. How do I become comfortable praying out loud? I would say that's probably a fear with most people, you know, praying out loud. But I would just say I believe it's a must that believers get the confidence to pray out loud. You're in Giant Eagle. You're at Eaton Park, wherever, Pittsburgh or Manny Brothers and somebody's telling you they need help, they need prayer, I mean, what are you gonna do? All right, I'll, I'll go tell the church. <laughs> yeah. I'll go, I'm gonna yeah. call my pastor right now and yeah. he's gonna pray for you. I'll call the prayer team. I mean, how about you as the believer, That's the son good. and daughter of God say, can I pray for you? God, wow. in Jesus' name, yes. you don't have to be weird, freaky, crazy Christian. God, I ask you right now that you help my brother, my sister, me is neat, whatever. And if you're stuck, I have no idea what to pray. Just say, our Father who art in heaven, yeah. hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That's a prayer that Jesus yes. taught us to pray. Right. You can go to the Ephesians prayers. You can pray the Ephesians. I mean, there are many scriptures that we could apply. Just start speaking those out loud and ask God for the boldness and the confidence. Because the world needs so this. Wow. Are you yes. comfortable praying out loud in a giant eagle? I am. I, I learned at a very young age to get comfortable with that. And I think that as even Pastor Amy said, it is really important that you are comfortable in that space. And so how do you get there? Do it by yourself. When you're at home, instead of being on your knees and, you know, actually speak, speak your out. prayers out loud. And then when you're with your loved ones, maybe it's your husband mm. or your friends or your family, start to pray with them. Just make it a habit. Listen, I'm trying to grow in this area and bear with me. Let's just pray before we leave. Wow. Jesus, safe travels. Yeah. You know, whatever right. it is, yeah. do it. And as it feels uncomfortable, 
push against that discomfort and push into the new spaces the Lord has for you. I know you pray out loud. Yeah, and I, I also started that at a young age because here's the thing. You have to remember what is your reason for doing it. It is not to put on a show like the Pharisees right, did right, on right, the right, corners, right. okay? It is not to compare yourself to other people. This has nothing to do how other people pray or the words they use or the right. Christianese or right, whatever. Right. This has to do with a conversation between you and God. <coughs> it does not matter what it sounds like. It does not matter if the people around you are better prayers right. or use different language. This is about speaking to God and he wants to hear from you. Mm -hmm. So just do it, like Nike that. says. I love it. Let's do it. Do you pray out loud? Um, yes, but I want to say this because I think what my sisters are saying is the scripture, and I'm sorry, I don't know what chapter, verse, etc. Fear of man is a snare. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you fear people, it's going to be a snare That's in good. your life to accomplish the purposes of God. That's really good. Now, I also have to say this. God's God, if you can't pray out loud yet, God says, go into your closet and don't let anybody see you because you're praying for the wrong reason. If you're praying out loud, long prayers and eloquent, whatever, and you feel good about yourself, hey, you got all the wrong reasons. Yeah. What did the prayer people, they were desperate. I said yes, the thief desperate. on the cross, he was desperate. Yeah. When you become desperate for someone else other than yourself, if you have the compassion, if Jesus puts in you, you can't help yourself but to say, I am going to pray for you. One word, two words. You know, um, we were talking about being in being in uh, places and people seeing, you know, saying, oh, I know you're on sister to sister. Right, right. There are times, you know, uh, we got to be careful how we touch people and so on. I was in a, a store once and the lady came up to me, you know, I love the sisters and thank you. And, and I, I put my hand on her forehead. God just said, place your hand wow. on her foot. I felt the Lord saying wow. that. We don't always have to say a lot. Sometimes people need to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Right. Sometimes people need a touch from us. Be careful. I'm caution, you know, do it for the right reasons in the right way. Not a show. Not a show. Right. But it was led, I felt, by the Holy Spirit. And her and I both, it was a female. Her and I both received something because we connected in a relationship that I became almost as desperate as her about her circumstance. Awesome. Thank you. That's so great. That is so great. I hate to leave that subject, but I have one more question. And Amy's going to answer it real quick. And it goes, oh, this is perfect for you, Amy. Mm -hmm. The question that you wrote is, I'm not sure what to do. How do I serve others? What should be my place? That's a great question. How do I serve others? Rabbi Daniel Lappin said something that just broke something off me and many people. He said, your work is your worship. Whatever okay. God has given you to put your hands to, you are serving God's people with that gift a nurse, an engineer. It's not just a ministry, not just the fivefold mm -hmm. ministry gifts, but what is the work he has given? Are you an architect? Can you do that for the glory of God? Mm -hmm. Can you serve God's people? Build that church. I mean, construction worker, anybody can serve. And you just have to, it's not about you. Right. It's about right. God, use my gift for others. Right. Amen. And use your, yesterday we had, um, we, we were here together, all of our sisters, and we talked about what is our purpose in life, right? And, and one of the sisters said, your purpose is your passion. And so how do we serve? What gifts have God given you? And that's what you use for the, for the glory of God. And I said, well, I'm a gardener. Mm -hmm. And then Amy reminded me, well, Kathy, you plant the flowers that's in the true. pots in front of church. So how do you serve others? Use your passion and your purpose for the glory of God. And we'll be right back to wrap this thing up.
Man, we talked a lot about some really great hearty questions today. Today there was some great meat in there. I hope you took notes. I hope you're reading scriptures. I hope you're looking things up. How about we all commit this year? Listen, we're in our 10th season here. We've got to grow together. Why do this if we're not? But we always like to end sister to sister with a scripture. And today that scripture is Hebrews 12, 1. Will you read it with me? Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I love what it says in the Message Bible. It says, it means we better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat and no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Come on, somebody. That means you got to get rid of some things. Like, that's enough worrying. Be done with it. That's enough insecurity. That's enough depression. That's enough overthinking. That's enough poverty and lack. Like, get rid of every weight that besets you and hold you back from running that race full for. And I know that God is with you. The Holy Spirit will help you. And really, truly, the best is yet to come. Wow. <laughs> I couldn't have said that <laughs> at all. But here's what I do say. I'm honored to end Sister to Sister with this scripture. And it goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or a sister sharpen the other. And then I add to you, family, and it is so true. These sisters always make me a much better Kathy. We're so glad you were with us. Join us again. We are sister to sister.